Welcome back to Chiang Mai and we ain't leaving without doing a legit food tour and today has been amazing. How good is that? Oh, it melts. We have tried some traditional Northern Thai dishes. I'm gonna eat some frog soup. <laughs> it is a frog murder scene in here. We've even tried dishes from different cultures. Sweeter kind of masala flavors. Mm. It's really good, you'll like that. We There's have... been some really weird stuff. <laughs> now a cricket, I don't know why I'm doing this. Why am I doing this? We have eaten things we never thought we would eat. <laughs> What's happening? And we're wrapping things up with some delicious sweet treats. Whoa! Whoa. Texture explosion. All right, who's hungry? I know I am. We haven't had anything for breakfast. <laughs> it's always the way with the with the food tour like this. The best thing you can do is not eat anything. But it's a 10 a.m. start, which is quite reasonable, eh? Like we're yeah. not starving, not. All we've had is coffee. <laughs> that's, we had to line the summits with something. That's it. So we've booked with the Chef's Tour today. They're a company that we've done food tours in Bangkok and Phuket before. They've got a couple in Chiang Mai, but they're also in like India and Vietnam and Malaysia, which is somewhere that we may see them at another stage. I'll leave a link below so you can check out all of their other tours around the world because they're expanding all over the place. Good morning, Sadakap. Stacy. Stacy. Nice, nice to, to meet, meet you. you. I'm Dane. Yeah, nice to meet you. How are you? Good, good. good. How are you? We're hungry. Thank you. Yeah, good. <laughs> good. 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 Yeah, we have lots of food for you. Yay. Yes. All right, let's go. Yeah. So the first dish we're going to try today is khao soy for breakfast. <laughs> You've probably heard us talk about khao soy in the past. It's traditional to the north and it's a noodle dish in a kind of a curry base. Apparently, back in the day, Chinese Muslims used to walk for six months, over 700 k's, to bring the black cardamom spices that they used in the dish to create it over here. But over time, it's kind of evolved, and every place kind of has their own different recipes. And this place that we're going to has a really nice story as well. It's been, this is the third generation. They're in their second location, but is like this family-run business. We love this stuff. And based on these Michelin stars, I think they're doing all right. It was super interesting to see how this cow soy is made because everything is kind of separate. The gravy or the curry was separate. It does have coconut milk in the curry, but then they added extra coconut milk in on the side. The beef is made separately. Obviously, the noodles are made separately. So, let's see. That is a different flavor than what we're used to. It's a little bit more tangy, a really like deep, rich flavor. Maybe that's got something to do with the beef as well. With some more like stew flavour. Yeah, well, yes, yeah. It's delicious. This beef has been stewing since 4 a.m. yesterday. Wait, this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Ages. How good is that? Oh, it melts. So the next one is something that we have never tried before. Um, but we have to try and pronounce it first, so we'll, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> okay, I'm not saying they're right at all, but nyom nyao, is that close enough? This is rice noodles, so vermicelli noodles with uh, chicken blood. There are pork balls, uh, tomatoes, and then a rich gravy. So this one tastes kind of unique because there's no shrimp paste or anything. It uses a fermented soybean, which Moi brought out in the car, sorry, in the song towel, and I kind of sniffed it and, and tried it. And honestly, in that shape, not a fan at all, but it gives this such a unique flavor. I'm surprised we haven't really come across it before, but I'm digging it. That pork ball is like the main flavor that I got, and that is incredible. That's one down, maybe about 18 more to go. <laughs> Sorry, that's two down, I should say, actually. Yeah. How are we gonna fit this all in? <laughs> yeah. I can stop myself from eating all the cowslips. <laughs> You've got to pace yourself. So there's lots of exciting things for this next stop. One of them is a water buffalo lab, which in the north apparently they use very different herbs and spices, which Moi was just explaining to us. It's called Mak Quang. Have you heard about this spice? Oh, no. It's related to Sichuan pepper. Oh. It has a bit of heat and yep. a bit of numbing effect. Wow, man. See, this is a whole new world. You would not be able to come in here and figure out what any of this is, but we just we just follow the boss here. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. This is like a pork curry. Yeah. Wow. Looks delicious. Yeah. So this is the raw water buffalo. Yeah, raw buffalo salad. And this is the cooked, cooked one. water buffalo yeah. salad. And was this the beef? Hot spicy beef soup. Yeah. Hot spicy beef soup. And so I've got my frog soup, we'll save that. But we've got our sticky rice and all of these random meals here. So I'm going to try the cooked water buffalo. And we're doing it the traditional Northern Thai way with the sticky rice, 
grab it all together. What have you gone for? I've got the Burmese pork curry. Mmm. Well, ma'am. This is kind of sweet, which isn't traditional Northern Thai. But because it's got the Burmese influence, that's why it uses the kind of like sweeter kind of masala flavors. Mm. It's really good. You'll like that. This is like almost a little bit, a little bit gamey in a way. But wow, it's like because it's water buffalo. Water buffalo, but it's like packed with flavor. That is delicious. The frog on the stove. <laughs> Unbelievable. So they sit there to stick the frog directly onto the grill. Yeah, onto the grill. And wow. Make into a soup. Hey, I'ma do it. I've got to try it. Has to be done. Surely. Would you do it? So my uh, my frog soup's got frog body parts all throughout. It is a frog murder scene in here. More herby than spicy? I mean, there's nothing weird going on. Does it taste like chicken? Because frog tastes like chicken. Nah, it, it, I mean, if you said to me that's a chicken soup, I'd be like, oh, cool. But it's just that, like I said, there's a graveyard of, of, of frogs up in here. That's, that's tasty. I don't know what I was expecting, but it's just normal. So this next stop is unique, not in the sense of like what we're eating, but more so in how it's cooked. It is cooked in a clay pot, which traditionally Thais use as, yeah, yes. Normally this is used for water storage, but what makes this place unique is that they actually cook the pork and the chicken with the herbs and the spices in these pots. What a cool and unique story that he just decided to do these clay pots and, and turned into this. He's very successful now, apparently. He's one of the most popular people in Chiang Mai. And he actually cooked for the princess. She didn't come here, he had to take all of the ingredients and the, the pot and everything and go and cook for her. But he's really running with the theme because even here under the table, the table is a pot as well. So that's kind of cool. First dish we have is the papaya salad, which came with a little bit of a show when she made it, eh? Yeah, <laughs> she loved it. She was like putting up all of the ingredients. This goes in, this goes in. <laughs> 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 the pork actually only takes two hours in those clay pots to cook. You know that? Yeah, two hours, and look how crispy it is. So we got a pork sauce that I'm supposed to dip this in. But she did say there's no rules, and we can use the chicken sauce if we want to. Mmm. Right food. It's so crunchy. <laughs> the pork itself is super tender, but the outside is crispy and crunchy in such a good way. It's like really salty, and then the sauce kind of cuts through that with the acid. It's like a little bit of a sour sauce, which seems to be a bit of a trend. And then when you add the basil afterwards, it just kind of makes it fresh and light. So the last hour and a bit has been full on. We stopped off to hang out with the Noodle Master. From the outside, this place looks more like a, a shop than a restaurant, but once you get through, sneak on out the back here. Here we go. So every day, this legend makes 30 kilos of his own noodles using wheat flour, did you say? Wheat flour. Wheat flour. So it's heavy, man. That is a lot of noodles right, even just right there. Oh, yeah. That's impressive. I love to see that. Got to try something I'm shocked that we haven't, but it's probably been my mm, close to my highlight of the day actually. That is a coconut pancake made from black sticky rice, coconut and like fresh coconut meat. They're like really thick. They're coming in they're coming in hot. <laughs> wow look! Wow the, you can actually the see texture the in there. It, it is kind of funny we were sitting here, but <laughs> It's so tight, but this is just some crispy, tasty, chewy goodness. It does just taste like sticky rice that's kind of been blended up, and that coconut and the sugar is what you can mostly taste. It's really good. As Kiwis, we love a good saucy on the barbie, but this one, <laughs> this one was a little bit different. Okay, this is a Northern Thai sausage. It's got pork inside and lots of different herbs and spices, which I've forgotten the name of. Is it good? Yum. Mm. Lemongrass? Mm. You can really taste the lemongrass. Mm. Yeah, that nice. is like surprisingly um, fresh and light for something that is clearly like, you know, oily heavy. and heavy. Yeah. yeah. Mm, yum. And then a super local market as well. 
and getting toured around and checking out all the different types of vegetables and watching the locals going about their thing. It's, it's interesting, but Moi was like, okay, if you've seen some of this stuff before, let's go look at the meat and uh, we'll see how that pans out. Frogs, fish. I get that looking at some of this might be quite jarring but one thing's for sure is it's very clean very very well presented and it actually looks like very sanitary in here the sheer amount of all of these northern Thai curries and all of these dishes this is why Moi just said to us this is why Thai people don't cook why, why would we need to especially when you can just come and grab your own rice as well just cheap pre-made pre-sized oh no all the bugs deep fried soup worm and deep fried cricket deep fried cricket shall we try some shall we try some no oh no thank you wait crunchy very weird like powdery texture oh the aftertaste is very buggy <laughs> That's a big one. I'll take a small one. Now a cricket. I don't know why I'm doing this. Why am I doing this? Again, really crunchy. Oily. Ooh. Mmm. Don't know about that last bit. What's this one? Another cricket. Oh my god, I can see his tentacles and everything. <laughs> or whatever they are. Yeah, again, oily. What are they cooked in to get that like oily? Deep fry and seasoning with soy sauce and pepper. Oh, oh soy okay. sauce. Yeah, so the people who live in the countryside. Okay. And to finish things off, Moi is just picking up so much stuff. At this point, we're obviously, we're full. Like, this is just tastings at the end here. But look at the size of this place. There's just so much goodness in here. Too hard, babe. Use the guns. <laughs> I can't get that last one. <laughs> you can just leave it here. Yeah. I don't really know what, what is this again? is. Sticky rice yeah. with beans. Yeah, with coconut milk and sugar. And coconut milk and sugar. I took the bean out because I'm not sure. <laughs> It just tastes like sweet sticky rice. Yum. Mm. This is coconut pudding. The top is salty and the bottom is more sweet. That's a big bite. Whoa. Whoa. Texture explosion. <laughs> the top is real slimy. The bottom is more dense. Mm. But I like that it's salty and sweet at the same time. That's a nice combo actually. Mm. So what's this one again? In Thai we call tap chim grob. Tap chim mean ruby in English. Grob means crunchy. It's made from water chestnut. Yeah. It's coat with chapiga flower and they dye the color. Yeah. Mm, that's yummy. The ice is weird. <laughs> the chestnut is nice though. I can't decide if I like that or not. <laughs> CNN apparently named this dish in the top 50 along with mango sticky rice. It's the only other Thai dish. <laughs> What's happening? There's so much happening. Yeah. It's like every single sweet, sour, salty, salty. Spicy, spicy, bitter, <laughs> sweet, <Yeah>. everything. <laughs> Couldn't eat it all. We got lots of lots yeah. of takeaways. Yeah, look, at this. <laughs> look at this whole big bag. <laughs> and that's a wrap on our walk down memory lane in Chiang Mai. We've had all of the food and so much more than what we expected. But next up, we're doing something completely different, somewhere we've never been before. We're heading to Khao Sok National Park. 